I feel like I we need to have a woman writers yeah. club and call it Titlet. Yeah, I think that could work. Because we write our books yeah. with our breasts. <laughs> <laughs> In lieu of Open Book Festival 2018, we brought together a pair of authors and asked them to dispel a few myths. In this episode, we have fiction authors Mohale Mashigo and Ijangolet Ogwang. First question, okay, well, I'll read the intro before. So we're debunking the myths about being a woman. First question, first myth, sorry. <laughs> it's a man's <laughs> world. That's the first myth. True or false? what do you think in general is it really uh, is it a man's world i don't i yeah i mean i guess yes everything in the world is sort of it's like walking into somebody into your room yeah. but it's been catered for somebody else but you're still you're still cleaning <laughs> the room you're, yeah. you're still creating in the room you're still yeah. living but you're like oh this bed is too hard like yeah. who who was this bed bought yeah. for so mm, mm. is it I, I, I think for me, it's almost this weird thing as well, where it's almost like structurally, it feels like it's been made that way. Yeah. But then at the same time, you feel like it's incomplete if we leave it as that. Yeah. Like, it's, like you feel like it's out of sync mm -hmm. if it is this way. So I think structurally it somewhat is, but I think it shouldn't be. And, and that's what's more important. It also kind of feels like it was also built on the shoulders of women, like yeah. the, the labor this is the thing. of women. Yeah. But somehow you still walk into the room, you're like, I built this house. Exactly. Why is this a <laughs> terrible bed? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's where for me it becomes a lot more complex because it's a man's world, but these are men who were predominantly nurtured by women. So even in the context of if you think about the Industrial Revolution, yeah. it was the woman who was raising this chap. Uh, then at the same time, you're going out there and building your own type of house when I raised you. So it's almost the disconnect is what I struggle with um, in, in men in general. Uh, yeah. I also think we, we women do a lot of emotional labor for men. In general. Right. And yeah. it's like, wow, I'm doing all this work for you. The least you could do is at mm -hmm. least make this room, you know, cater to my needs or, yeah. you know, whatever. I was I was watching this uh, stand up routine, mm -hmm. um, Ali Wong, and she was talking about how it's important to have maternity leave. And she says there isn't a federal policy in the States for maternity leave. Yeah. I was floored. I was like, wow, <laughs> what <laughs> wild world is this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I just thought about it. I was like, of course, the people who make mm -hmm. all the rules don't yeah. understand why it's yeah. important to take a fucking break when yeah. your body's like yeah. battered and you're like a food factory. Yeah. It's, it's important. I would take it as far as saying that there needs to be menstrual period leave because how can I be on Excel with all the crabs? <laughs> and my male colleague is chilling. Just chilling, your boy's here. <laughs> I have crabs, I'm trying to do this model and I can't. I don't go that far. And I think what, I'm what, with you. what disturbs me is just, I, I, in general, my feeling is that it's a man's world as far as men are allowed to be human, women are expected to be perfect. And, and that's why I would say this myth is probably true. It is a man's world because perfection is subliminally expected from women yeah. and not from men. And also, yeah. men are not a, a, a subcategory yeah. of human. Yeah. You know, they, they are, the, when they talk about humans, yeah. it's always a man in mind. Mm. The rest of us are a yeah. subcategory. So I guess, but I mean, we built this. Yeah. We should be able to change it because we built <laughs> exactly. it. We just need them to shut up for a bit. <laughs> yeah, just take a seat. Um, so the second myth is there's a single writing process that people should follow. Somebody once told me that mm. some woman, I guess she was a famous writer or whatever, but mm. she had like kids and she used to wake up in the morning at six o'clock in the morning and she'd try to do like a thousand words or like mm. a page or something. And I thought, if I wake up at six o'clock in the morning, I'm not going to write anything. Yeah. I'm, I'm not that kind of person. So mm. I, no, no. What's mm. your writing process? So my process is I am inspired by life and people. So I tend to be the iPhone on the side, writing down things we're speaking about during lunch with friends and stuff. How dare so, you? <laughs> How very dare you? So a lot of it comes to me as part of life. And, 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 and it's so funny. So in writing my debut novel, I was telling my friends, subliminally, I was casting them for characters, but they didn't even know. I was like, let me ask you this question and see if I can build you into one of my characters. <laughs> so my process is very much on the go, where I, I keep my phone on me because I write about stuff as I walk. But then 
I tend to enjoy writing like at weird times, like two o'clock in the morning or midnight when it's quiet. So I genuinely like like a quiet feel. Um, but definitely no single process. It's definitely. also very personal, you know. There we go. It's very, very yeah. personal. So if somebody told me that I could only write in the mm -hmm. mornings, I'm screwed. Yeah, because it's almost your sense of being as a writer. So mm. it's not something you can be taught or something that can be scientific. And also, I lack discipline, yeah. so I don't write every day. There are people yeah. that are like, I have this many days and yeah. I'm going to have this many pages. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some days I'm like, I did not write a single thing and, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> but, yeah. So I lack discipline. I'm yeah. a writer with no discipline and if there was only one way to write, mm -hmm. I, I probably wouldn't be able to. Yeah. So I think there definitely isn't. Um, so the third question, the third myth. <laughs> question, myth. Question, questions. myth. Um, Genre is gendered. Women can only write chick literature and domestic fiction. <sighs> this is my least favorite thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, last year at Franz Schuch, I was talking to these uh, very successful writers, three mm -hmm. of them women from the UK, and we were talking about book clubs. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, book clubs are so gendered. Yeah. And it, it's because it, the question was being a being a book club writer. And I said, there's there's a small and an undertone that I don't yeah. like about this. Yeah. Like, are you proud of being a, <laughs> a, you know, a book club writer? And I yeah. do feel like we, I can write anything like mm. I, I could write a thriller and they'd still be like, it's it's a woman's book. Mm purely because i mean i obviously write with my w with my breasts you know yeah it's a woman's <laughs> book because i was typing with my breasts ah. <laughs> like i don't understand why it's yeah. a woman's book yeah. but i i i almost want to say that it's not true but mm. the the way people sell books mm -hmm. you know or the way people lead with she's a woman but yeah. i didn't know women could write this kind yeah. of thing i i almost want to to say being especially in south africa being mm. being a woman writer is standing on the shoulders of invisible giants mm. while people are erasing your work yeah and sort of shifting it to mm. chiclet mm. You, you know whatever that is a woman mm. can write crime fiction yeah. and somehow mm. you know it, it, the detective is is a woman you <laughs> yeah. know, it's, it's a yeah. it, it's about <coughs> feminism or whatever mm. and it's kind of like oh please go away yeah i really just wrote a book about yeah. crime because i wanted to do that yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's so interesting i forget the title of this book but one of the best books i've written i mean i've read was written by this asian woman and it's about these four male friends mm. um and she writes about all these characters and had i not known it was a woman i wouldn't have assumed it was a woman who wrote that book so the way she gets into the male psych and 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 the way she tells the story of these four male characters, very different characters, the one's a lawyer, the one's a stay-at-home artist, and the way she describes their struggles, it's, it's such a beautiful book. But even with that book, there are a lot of people who said, oh, we could tell it was a female writer. And I think there is a level of priming that people, people almost feel it's an insult to say it's a female writer, or they feel the need to contextualize it, and therefore to make it feel like guys don't read it because she's a female writer, so she can't write a thriller or she can't write a fantasy novel. But then you don't get the same thing with, with men. When, when, when someone introduces a, a man's book, there's no, ah, uh, he's a ma male writer, you know? They're like, it's um, a psychological thriller, <laughs> exactly. the best you'll ever read exactly. this year. So I think there is almost a, a, a industry priming that happens that makes women then shy away from it and, and them feeling subconsciously that they shouldn't write it. But in terms of skill set and ability, I think a woman can write any type of book. And I'd even argue better than a man because you're able to feel a greater spectrum, which may be problematic to say, but... <laughs> <laughs> say what you want to say. But I, I, I think so, I think so. I think yeah. women can write whatever mm -hmm. and, and do it really well. But as soon as that thing is packaged yeah. and the name on there yeah. is a woman-y name, yeah. suddenly, oh my God, it's yeah. chocolate. It. Yeah. It's like, no, this is, this is actually, you yeah. know, about a war or whatever. Yeah. They're like, what do women know about war? Yeah. It's chocolate. It. Yeah. So from the writing perspective, I know that women can write whatever. Mm -hmm. And even chocolate, it, it's like, why is it bad that chicks are reading? Yeah, but, but, but it's also, 
what what upsets me is the assumption, and, and this is an interesting thing that I saw with my novel, which I was grateful for, is a lot of my male friends bought it because it was mine. Then they read it and they're like, oh, snap, I could relate to, to, to these female voices who are the two narrators in the book. And I was just like, there's this assumption that if it's a female voice that's the main character, then all of a sudden it's not relatable to the whole spectrum of humanity. Yeah. But if it's a male writer, then we should just relate. You know what I mean? Because and we're a subcategory. <laughs> and, and, and that's where that comes in again. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely think this is a myth and it's not true. Yeah, it's in the packaging and also people's perceptions of women and, and mm. writing. Yeah. So that, that's an outside problem. But yeah. in as far as writing, yeah. women can write whatever. You can call it, you can call it titlet if you yeah. want, you know, because we write it with our breasts. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I like that, titlet. Can we make that a thing? <laughs> I think that could be a word. <laughs> titlet, I don't know how yay. many people would be comfortable using it. <laughs> Thank you for watching our offering for Open Book Festival. Don't forget to get your tickets and attend the festival from the 5th to the 9th of September 2018. Also, don't forget to do the most important things. Like, share, comment, watch, and subscribe. <laughs> That's what happens when you're a writer. People think you're smart. <laughs> Sometimes people ask things about the book, and I'm like, I actually haven't read this book. I know I wrote it, but can you I need to read this just thing tell again. me more about the situation you're talking about? What exactly happens in that chapter? <laughs> So as advice, I would say, read your own book again, because people are going to they're gonna be like, on page 12, <laughs> we're like, oh. I've been victim of that too many times. <laughs> oh.